Hey everyone, welcome to Collins Creatures. This is Houdini, my brown anole, and this is his temporary enclosure because I had to build something uh, with what I had on hand because I adopted him from some friends who wild caught him while they took great care of him. They lost interest, so they gave him to me. And he, I named him Houdini because he's an escape artist and is very fast. And because of that, I'm not going to be holding him. So I'm going to build his new enclosure, and then I'm going to talk more about brown and old. So let's get on with the build. So now let's talk about the materials. The first thing we have is this Reptizoo 12x12x18 enclosure, which I recently did a video on constructing it and reviewing it. And then we have a water dish down here, this chala wood stick, and then there is some coconut fiber substrate with isopods and springtails, and then over here is some moss, then we have three live plants, and then we have a halogen heat light and a nano and a UVB bulb that will go into this Reptizoo double nano fixture. So after a lot of fiddling, we got it set the way we wanted, and Eagle Eye viewers may see that we put in a different water dish. We also broke the chala wood further to get it in the way we wanted, and we put the vine from the temporary enclosure into this one. And the substrate is bioactive, and there's live plants, and the reason for that is the little creatures living in the soil will break down natural wastes, and the plants will break down nitrogenous wastes, as well as look nice and give Houdini a place to climb on as well as hide in and also the plants will hold on to more moisture. Now I named him Houdini for a reason. Trying to get him out can be a handful as he's very fast and he could just disappear. So I need to catch him and then get him into his enclosure so we can then talk more about brown anoles. So I'm not going to hold him too long because he really doesn't like it. So the common name is the brown anole, and the scientific name is Anolis sagrii. Some other common names are the Cuban brown anole and the Bahaman anole. Now, some of, now I'm using anole, but some of you may be hearing me and saying, that's not right, it's anole And after lots of research, I couldn't find any consensus on what to actually call them. And it's very regional, so there really is no proper way of saying the name. So whether you say anol or anoli, it's all correct. So long as you don't say anol. So now I'm going to put him into his new home. to show you but I got the lights on now they are from Cuba and the Bahamas and though they were introduced to much of the southern United States which negatively impacted the native green anole populations they tend to prefer living closer to the ground and in shorter plants though they are well adapted to living in human areas like cities resorts and amusement parks. When I was at Disney a couple of years ago, there were tons of brown anoles, and it was really fun trying to catch them. And while I wasn't very good at it, my buddy Adam was. They are small brown lizards with a long slender tail that is longer than their body length, which gives them about five to eight inches of total length. They are not homogeneously brown, as there are lots of markings, like stripes, that radiate down from their spine and go across their body. Their head is triangular, but is more blunt than that of the pointy green anole. Their tail can drop, and it will regrow, though it won't look the same as their old tail. Houdini's tail is his original. Males have a reddish-orange dewlap, which is a flap of skin that is on the bottom of the neck that they use as an intimidation or dominance display. It can actually be confusing to tell the difference between a green and brown anole. Crazy, I know. Well, actually, green anoles can be brown, but brown anoles can't be green. 
and the green anoles that are brown will lack the patterns that the brown anoles have. They are skittish and fast, and wild caught ones like Houdini can be very feisty and may even attempt to bite when they are grabbed. They are diurnal, which means that they are active during the day, which actually might make them great display animals as people want to see their animals, and other lizards like crested geckos are, only, are mostly active at night. And while they are diurnal, I have noticed, like at Disney, that they will be active at night in well-lit areas. In the wild, they eat mostly invertebrates, though they will eat the eggs and hatchlings of small lizards, including those of the green anole, as well as their shed skin, as well as their dropped tails. In captivity, appropriately sized insects with calcium supplementation are adequate. It is good to provide them with a heat light and a UVB bulb, so the heat can provide them with a basking area and help with digestion, and the UVB can help with calcium. So in summary, the brown and all is a very cool lizard, and I hope Houdini enjoys his new enclosure. So that is Houdini, my brown and all. I hope you enjoyed and learned a lot. I certainly learned a lot while researching for this video. And thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel, like my videos, and I'll see you next time on Collins Creatures.